calling. Calling. I've got a calling. I've got a calling. Have you ever heard that? People say, no, I've got a calling, or you're called, or you're called to ministry. Who have you ever heard people say they've been called to ministry? Um, I didn't say that. I said that, yes. <laughs> um, but I, I want to like just touch on that because I think sometimes you know, people have this perception that it's only certain people that are called, or just certain people, you know, it's for the anointed man with his calling, and yes, we kind of exclude ourselves sometimes from certain things. So, quickly, just to on that point, go with me to Ephesians 4. Okay, so Ephesians 4 from verse 11, it says, um, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Then he says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Let's go. For the perfecting of, for, of the saints, of the saints, for the work of ministry. So who is called for to ministry? Everyone. Okay, so I want you to hear this this morning. You are called for ministry. Yes. You are called for ministry. Bainat, you are called for ministry. Caleb, you are called for ministry. Esther, you are called for ministry. Well, you are called for ministry. Tani, you are called for ministry. Stephen, <laughs> <laughs> you are called for ministry. Anada, you are called for ministry. Nikki, you are called for ministry. In Amber, Roger, in Jasmine, <laughs> you are called for ministry. Come on. It's for the equipping. You know, it makes it, but they, they are there for the equipping, for the saints, for ministry. So we are, we are all called for ministry. And this morning, I want to quickly look at what ministry. Okay, so how does my calling look like? And what is my ministry? That's what I want to touch on this morning, okay? If I say I'm called for ministry, then what is my ministry and how does this calling look like? Okay? <laughs> so the first thing I want you to hear is everyone is called for ministry. Say that's me also. That's me. Second thing I want you to hear, or this I just want to throw in here, is everyone is called to heal the sick. You know, we make it like, I know that guy, he's the special guy with the special healing thing. He's the healer, he's going to come to town, he's going to come and pray for people. No, Jesus said those that believe. These signs will follow them that believe. Believe. Okay, and we're going to go read some of that. Um, in the week, funny enough, I was, I was on this topic and I was listening to a guy and he was giving a testimony of how, and he said the same thing. You know, I, I had this thing and he's like, yeah, everyone is called, you know, for healing and he says once he was in a place and he was he was preaching at the church and he was telling the people that and he, he could feel in the atmosphere the people didn't like eh, kind of take it because he was trying to tell them listen i'm not the special guy that can, you can you're all called to do this and he could see they were a bit like he could feel you know in the atmosphere like people weren't believing what he was saying so then he said in that moment he's, the spirit just pressed on his heart he said listen is there is there people here that can't, they are deaf or they can't, that's got a problem with their ears. So two ladies came up, both deaf in the one ear, totally deaf in, you know, both of them had one ear that was totally deaf. So he said, okay, you guys going to stand here and I'm not going to, you guys are going to pray for each other's deaf ears. So they stood, he said, you must stand like this with your hand on her ear. You must stand like this with her ear. He says, and now... You're going to pray for each other. He said, but just, just come on. You know, he just kind of instructed them. Don't, no, just come on. Just say this. It must, they must be healed. Oh, yes, must open. He says, he was, he was hardly saying that. And suddenly, poof, both of their ears popped open. You see, that was just God confirming and he wanted the people to understand. And then he said, he said, listen, first of all, these were two, if you ask them before, and do you think these people have a special gifting for you or whatever, they would exclude themselves. Because they didn't believe before that happened that they could do it. And they also, the people around there probably didn't think they were able to, to open up their fears. Come on. Because they still, they didn't have, have that revelation. And, um, and he said, so first of all, and secondly, both of them are sick. 
So that also shows you, you can be sick and pray for other sick people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you get that? So it's not a special thing. It's just a, it was just demonstrated there. Two people, boom, their ears open. They pray for each other. Man, isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. You see, I want you to hear this. It's for everyone. Okay, so everybody say that's for me too. That's for me. Mm -hmm. So this morning, what is this calling and what is this ministry? Uh, I said here, yeah, we have a calling and responsibility not to only be the, to believe the words of Scripture, but actually to walk in them. Now, I have this, I have this um, example. Imagine you were a car. <laughs> um, I, get, I, I don't know what are like the fastest cars at the moment. Um, I, I'm doing this. You can do it in this like my mm -hmm. Go with me to John 20. John 20. So the question is, what is my calling? What is this ministry? So we start off in John 20. Okay, let me just say this from the, from the get-go. If Jesus is our example, and we are to be like him, we all agree. We are made in his image and his likeness. And he said, the things I do, you also got to do. Then we need to look a bit closer at what was Jesus' mission, what was his message, and what was his ministry. Because then you'll find out, hey, that is also mine. Because we're going to read now. He says, Father, as you've sent me, I've sent him. And we're going to read this, this thing over and over again, where Jesus says, what you've called me to do, I'm not going to teach them to do, I'm going to send them out to do, and they are to do the same thing, okay? So John 20, um, let's read this, um, hmm, where will we go? Um, let's go with, I think it's here, this 19, 20, yeah. Okay, now, let's just read there. It says, this is now, this is now after um, Jesus were resurrected. So now he's starting to appear to the people, okay? Um, I, I know in one place it says, for 40 days, he still met with them, he appeared to them, teaching them about, speaking about the kingdom. It's amazing, that was his message from the start. When he got there, first it was John the Baptist, and he proclaimed the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus came on the scene, 
and he had the same, you know, he continued with that message. And I believe also that's why he said that he was the greatest prophet, because he was actually proclaiming, he was the one there to introduce the world to, to Jesus. He says, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But John's message was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yet Jesus comes and says, yes, the kingdom is now at hand, because here I am. <laughs> okay. And his message the whole time was, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told it to them, then he demonstrated it to them. He told it to them, then he demonstrated it to them. He always had a parable or a good news or spoke about the goodness of the Father and then he demonstrated to them. So his method was it's always a show and tell. Sometimes he first show and then he tell and sometimes he tell and then he show. But it's always a show and tell thing. And there was always a demonstration also about the goodness of God. There was also a demonstration of the kingdom. Um, you know, so, so we need to get this. You know, we need to always look for opportunities, I believe, where God wants to manifest His kingdom, where God wants to touch someone. And I believe that is the greatest key. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to speak about that later, but the greatest key for us to walk in this, I believe, is just to look for opportunity, just to be aware, you know, of what we have, and that we can, whether it's over the phone, whether it's someone, you know, just to be aware of what we're going to read today. Beware, this, ach, beware, be aware <laughs> that this is my calling, this is my... You know? So so this morning it's about every one of you. And it's about what your calling is, what your ministry is, what God called you. So okay, so this is after the resurrection. Now in verse 19, um, John 20, 19. So now he's appearing to people. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them. And said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, I also think Jesus had a little bit of a sense of humor. Because I don't know if you've ever made someone scared or gave someone a fright. But imagine this. They're in a closed place with all the doors are closed. And suddenly Jesus is in the midst of them and he says, Peace be to you. I mean, that's all my afternoon. You know, but I just think, you know, he could have used the door. But he's like, no, I'm going to just appear in your midst and just tell you, Peace be unto you. Okay, so he said, Peace be unto you. And when he had said that, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Man, imagine what an incredible encounter that must have been. Like you've walked with Jesus, you've seen the cross, you've, you know, you know, hey man, he died. Suddenly here he is and he shows you, hey, I'm alive. And he shows you his hands and everything. He says, then were his, disi <laughs> his disciples glad when they saw the Lord. I believe this is one of the greatest Sure, this must be one of the greatest encounters that there has been. That I think we make a little, we make too little of this, of what happened right here, because this was after Jesus did his whole earthly ministry, after he did everything. Now, after he appears to them, he this is the first thing now he tells them. Listen what he says: "Peace be unto you." And then his words is this: "As my Father has sent me, even so I send you." So let's say, say same sending. Same sending. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. You see, what enabled Jesus to be who he was? What enabled him to do what he could do? We're going to read it now in Philippians. We'll read it now now. Where it says that he stripped himself of all his, his deity, to become like us, a man. So when he did the things he did, it wasn't out of, I am God, so I do this. It was out of, I'm a man, and then, but I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit, and I do this, <laughs> okay? That's what, you know, he waited, when you read about when he was baptized, before that, you don't really see him doing any, like, major miracles and stuff. And here, suddenly, after his baptism, after the Holy Spirit came and empowered him, he started doing all these things. And he said himself many times, he says, I do nothing by myself. He says, I can only do what I hear and I see my Father do. The works I do is not my works. He says, it's the Father in me doing the works. He says, the Son can do nothing by himself. I mean, come on, that's the way he was. The, I believe it was to demonstrate to us. It was all for a purpose, to demonstrate for us. And the crazy thing is, from the get-go, from Jesus starting to do the miracles, all these things, from the get-go, he started getting people around him, and he started training them to do the same. You can see clearly how he wanted them 
to start doing the same things that he did. He wanted to, and then later he sends them out and he says, go heal the sick. Go do all these things you've been seeing me doing. Go and do it. Okay, well, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but let's go to... Okay, so here, I want you to hear this. He says, peace be unto you. As my, as my father has sent me, so I send you. And then he says, he breathed on them, and he said to them, receive the Holy Ghost. When was the first time? When you read in Genesis, it says, God formed man, and he breathed into him. Okay? He breathed into him life, and he became a living soul. Here suddenly Jesus is breathing on them. Come on. Suddenly creating a whole new race. <laughs> right there. Come on. And he says, go and wait until you get the Holy Spirit. Come on, that was also. Go and wait. So he wanted them to wait for, 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 to, to get what he had. Okay? What he enabled him. So, and then he says something very interesting. Receive the Holy Ghost. Then he said, whoever since you remit, they are remitted unto them, and to ever since you retain, they are retained. I read it the other day and I thought, wait a minute, he just gave them the Spirit, and then he says this. And I thought, why do you say this? And suddenly I, re I remember, wait a minute, there's another scripture where Jesus said, which is easier, to tell this man to rise up and walk, or to tell him your sins are forgiven? You, want, you see, I believe he wanted them to get something. Go with me to, let's go there quickly. Matthew 9. Come on, this is the first thing he says. He says, listen, by the way, whoever sins you forgive will be forgiven. So suddenly he tells him, by the way, you also have the power to forgive sins. Let's read Matthew 9. I just, I, like I said, this is just my own, like, yeah. This is just, I just love it when, when things speak of this. Okay, so, Matthew 9, verse 1, he says, um, <coughs> And it, he entered into a ship, and passed over, and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man, sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Okay? You see, Jesus had the power to do that. Yes, I mean, he gives them the power to also do this. God, he says, your sins are forgiven me. And behold, certain of the scribes said within himself, this man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore do you think evil in your hearts? For whether is, what is easier, to say your sins be forgiven, or to say arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go unto your house. Come on, I don't believe this is coincidence, that this is in the scripture, and that he says, I to this, listen, by the way, you can also not forgive sins. So what is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk? So guess what, you've got the ability to say also, rise up and walk. <laughs> I, want, I hope you see that. Okay, go with me to, but let's, okay, this was just all, Go with me to John 17. This is just part of the intro. So, John 17. John 17. He said, As you sent me, Father, I sent them. Now, in John 17, we read the same thing. Um, I love John 17, where Jesus prays for us. This whole long prayer, all for us. Um, yeah, he prays that we may be one as they are one. Us in them, they in us. Come on, the same oneness. He says, Father, the oneness that I have with you, I pray that they will have that same oneness in us. How one is the Father with him? Well, Jesus prays that we will now also be included in that oneness. Us in them, them in us. Okay. So, um, here it says in this. Okay, it says in the, let's, where can we go? Verse 15. Um, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. 
as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Again, there you've got the same thing. Father, as you've sent me, I'm going to send them. Okay? So, what was Jesus' mission? Go with me to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. But say, I've got the same mission because I've also been sent. <laughs> okay? Jesus says, the same way, Father, you've sent me, now I'm sending them. So let's look a bit at what was Jesus's, what did he say? What, did he, what was his mission statement? So in Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Okay, now why is the Spirit on black? Why did he empower him? He says, for this reason, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Come on, it was say to preach good news. He sent me to bind up broken hearted. What I say to to to, how we say to, heal. to heal the broken hearted. Okay, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Man, that is awesome. You can tell people, hey, <laughs> you are acceptable to God. <laughs> okay. Um, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more. Okay, now go with me to Luke 4. So that is a prophecy in Isaiah, and it's about the Messiah that should come. And so now in Luke 4, we get to the story where Jesus is reading out of that chapter. Okay. <laughs> Now, if you go with to Luke, if you go look in, if you go look in Luke four, okay, from verse one, you know you can you can follow the story where it says Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So this is the part where he gets now tempted by the devil in the wilderness, okay. But I don't want to go through that part. I just want to scroll down because then after this whole ordeal with him and the devil being tempted in the wilderness. Um, it says in verse, where can we go on? In verse um, 13, it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Again, it makes it clear, you know, the whole time that he was now empowered by the Spirit. <laughs> empowered by the Spirit, and they went out. A fame of him through all the region around about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, which he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And now we read what we just read in Isaiah, because this is where he's now reading. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> yes, man, this is so powerful. So this was like, the, I mean, this was all these years, this was in the, in the Bible, you know, about this prophecy about the Messiah that should come. Yet Jesus opens the book and he, said, he, he tells them straight up, listen, this is me. <laughs> okay, he says here, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Interesting, he leaves the vengeance part out because that was the day of vengeance, talking about the cross that he was going to do. And he says, I'm going to take all upon me, all judgment, all. Now he's the ruler of this world just. He says, I'm going to take this all upon me. Okay, so he, he leaves that part out. Interesting. Now, but let's go on. He says, And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So he makes it plain. He says, Guys, this is talking about me. This is what I came to do. Um, yeah. 
So Jesus is basically making it clear, this is my mission statement. This is why I came. This is why the Spirit of the Lord is in me. In a, in a nutshell, he's saying, this is what I come to do. Okay? Now later he says, Father, as you sent me, I send them. Okay? They will say, I've got the same mission. I actually want to get a t-shirt and print that scripture out and say, hey man, the Spirit of the Lord is... A, you know, because... Because that is who we are. That is like what we've been called to do. It's just we've got the same, the same calling, the same mission. Okay, so let me say his mission is our mission. His mission is our mission. His job description is our job description. His job description is our job description. Go into Romans 8. Okay, now we're going to read some scriptures. Some, also we're going to jump between some scriptures. Romans 8, verse 29. It's all got to do with this, what we're talking about. Romans 8.29. It says, Whom he did foreknown, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Ever say among many brethren. Many brethren. You see, it wasn't just, he wasn't just supposed to stay alone. There was supposed to be many, many brethren. In one place it says, unless a seed dies, it remains alone. But once it, once it dies, it produces much harvest or fruit. You know? So, talking about his death, and he said, I need to go die so that I can produce. There can be much fruit coming up from that. Okay? So God had in mind a whole, a whole race of people doing the same things he did, that he's the first among many brethren. Jesus says, the works I do, John 14, you will do also, and greater works. Sure. If I say, Jesus promised that I will do the same things as him. Jesus promised just that, that just say it. That I will do the same things as him. Probably we saying it this morning. As he is, so will we in this world. We, we kept on singing it. As he is, so will we in this world. Jesus says, the works that I do, you will also do. Now, if you say, no, I can't do them, I do it, then you tell him, no, Jesus is a liar. Come on, just think about it. Jesus said it. So either we believe it, or we call him a liar, or we, or we don't believe. But Jesus said, that is the truth. You will do the same works. Okay? And so I will do the same works. I will do the same works. Not the guy next to me, I will. <laughs> Come on, a lot of times it's like, oh yeah, he will. It's like all the Benny Hins. Yo, hulle gaan dit doen, maar nie ek, ek is maar net een normale ou. No, <laughs> you are called to ministry. Okay, you are called to ministry. And we're going to go through it a bit and see how Jesus sent them out, how he empowered them, and how they are supposed to do the same things. Okay, so John 14, 12, as I said, he says, you will do the same works as me. Go with me to Acts 10, verse 38. Um, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I'm going to say with the Holy Ghost. The Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. And with power. And with power. Now remember what he told them. Go and wait until you receive the Holy Ghost and power. The same thing he had. He wanted them to wait so that they can get what he had. Okay. He says, Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. What did he wait, uh, what did he do? He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I love that. What's the requirement? God was with him. What why do you need to know? God is with you. <laughs> you don't need any other thing than that. To know that God is with you. To be able to step into this. Okay? So um, 1 John 3 verse 8 1 John 3 1 John 3 verse 8 says uh, He that commits sin is of the devil for the devil sins from the beginning 
For this purpose, ever since for this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God, God was made manifest that He might destroy the works of the devil. So I say, I've got the same mission. Okay. I've got the same message and I've got the same ministry. Okay, so, um, go with me to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. I know I'm jumping around, but you'll, I think you'll see the full picture. <laughs> okay, I'm just taking you on a, on a journey. But at the end, you'll see the full picture. Okay, what I'm trying to say. So, Matthew 11, um, from this two. Now, Jesus went, as we said, when Jesus came on the scene, he started speaking about the kingdom the whole time. He would tell them, listen, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then he would build the city. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, with, with within arm's reach, how can we say it? At hand. You know, the way I see it is my cell phone is at hand. Well, it's in my hand. My wallet is at hand. I can just put my hand in my pocket. It's at hand. Um, that guitar is not at hand. That's a bit too far. I need to go over there to get it. Come on, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's like right here. So he was telling them, listen, guys. There's a new thing here. A new thing has arrived. It's God's rule and reign. Ever say God's rule and reign? God's rule and reign. That's what the kingdom is. It's not like a physical, it's God's rule and reign. Wherever, listen, wherever a, a healing happens, wherever a thing, that's the kingdom manifesting. Come on, whenever a broken heart is being restored, that's the kingdom manifesting. Whenever anything that Jesus said he was coming to do, when it manifests, that's the kingdom manifesting. He said, and we're going to read it, he says, when, whenever a demon possessed is, is being delivered, the kingdom, or whenever you drive out a demon by the finger of God, he says, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Come on, that, it's about God's rule and reign. Wherever God's will is being done, His rule and reign is being done, that is where the kingdom manifests. Okay? That's a sign that the kingdom is in, has just manifested. Let's, let's just go and see what is Jesus' proof of the kingdom. Okay, Remember, he came and he said the kingdom is at hand. John said, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin, and he was preaching the kingdom is at hand. Now it's interesting, John was the one that announced it. <laughs> he was the one that boldly proclaimed, Hey man, this is, the, this is the Messiah, this is the Son of God that takes away of the sin of the world. He proclaimed it to everyone. Now later, he's sitting in prison, and now he asks, listen, just go and ask Jesus, is he the one? Mm. You know, the one, one moment he was certain, and now suddenly he starts to doubt. Okay? But now listen what Jesus responds. So it's in, uh, where are we? Matthew 11, from verse 2. It says, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou that that sh he that should come, or should we look for another? Sure. Jesus answered and said unto them. Now I think it's because maybe because he was sitting in prison and he, he's thinking by himself, Jesus, but you said you're gonna come and rescue the prisoners. So he said that knows her, but no. Can follow the coffee, he says, I say that no again. It's him as a boss is a scum. He did just like, really? Are you are you gonna come help me or what? But Jesus answered and said unto him. Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. Come on, that's what Jesus said, I'm coming to you. He says, the blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Come on, that is what he said is what I'm going to come and do. But we read he says, and blessed is he which so ever shall not be offended in me. So what was Jesus saying? He says, listen, do you want to know, do you want to know if I'm really the one? Do you want to know the, what is the proof that, that the kingdom is now here? He said, this is the proof. He says, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached unto them. 
And that was Jesus' proof that the kingdom is at hand. Come on, that was his proof. He says, <clears throat> if you see these things, then your kingdom is at hand. Okay? Go with me to Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Verse 23 and verse 24. You see, we're asking the question, what was Jesus' mission? What was his message? What was his ministry? And now we look at some scriptures that kind of point us out exactly what Jesus was doing. What was his mission? What was his thing? Because we need to look at that because he says, as you've sent me, I send them. <laughs> okay, so we've got the same mission. He says, and Jesus, verse 23 and 24, Matthew 4, 23, 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all, all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and which were possessed with devils and those who were lunatic and those that had palsy and he healed them. Again, and he healed them. They brought all the sick to him, and he healed them. And he healed them. Okay? And many other places we also read about these kind of things. Go with me to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, verse 7. He says, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So listen, when he sends them, starts sending them out, he tells them to have the same message that he had. Can you see how he's trying to duplicate himself? He says, guys, this is my message, this is my mission. He demonstrates it to them. Then he says, now you go out and you go do what I've been doing. Go tell them the kingdom is at hand and then go heal the sick. Come on, he was spending all his time with them, training them. From, and you see it from the start. He started, he didn't, he had to from Moshe. And from the beginning of, he called these guys to be among him so that they can see what he's doing, so that he can teach it to them, so that they can then go out. Because he knew, once I'm not here anymore, I want them to continue with what, what I've been doing. He says, because, Father, the way you've sent me, I've now sent them. Okay, so he says, go preach and then go demonstrate. Sometimes he would tell them, go, go heal and then go preach. Heal the sick and then tell them the kingdom is at hand. Or sometimes he says, tell them the kingdom is at hand and then heal them. So it was always a demonstration and it was always a message of goodness at hand. It's here. And, okay, so go with me to. Okay, so not only did his mission become our mission, but his message also became our message. I want you to see that. He tells them now to go spread the message that he's been spreading. Okay? Then, um, Matthew, okay. Luke 11, verse 20. I just want to read that quickly. It says, um, yeah, this is what I said previously, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon upon uh, uh, upon, <laughs> upon you. Okay, so let's go on. I want you to go with Philippians to go with me to Philippians to I love it in Matthew ten. You can go read the Matthew ten verse Seven or okay, while you okay, turn with me to Philippians 2 and I'll read for you while you're turning there. Matthew 10 verse 7 and 8. Here again it says, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Cast out devils, then he says, freely you have received, freely give. <laughs> Come on. Everybody say, freely I've received. Freely I've received. 
I need to go freely give. <laughs> okay. Um, so, go back to Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Like I said before, I just want to put this in, you know, like I said before, a lot of people, like we read what Jesus did and we think, yeah, well, that was Jesus. I mean, that was God in the flesh. I mean, obviously he could heal the sick and raise the dead. And you exclude yourself. Okay, but what does Philippians 2, it says here, Philippians 2 verse, um, verse 6, it says, it talks about, well, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then he says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now verse 7, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Come on, he stripped himself of that. You know, he didn't like, he stripped himself of that for a reason that he could be born in a manger like a normal, I mean, I always ask to do it, what a normal can do it, do it. That he could be like us. Okay, in one other place it says he took upon him the seed of Abram. I thought it like he became human. Okay? He was still God, and I want you to hear that he decided I'm gonna strip my, I'm, not, I'm gonna strip myself of all of that. So that I can come to their level. It says that he was tempted in all things just like us, so that he could be the high priest. If you felt temptation, he also felt. He went through it also, he came totally himself in horns. But he was empowered by the Spirit to demonstrate to us what is possible if a human being is empowered by the Spirit as a son of God, what can a son of God do? To show and tell us, this is how I call you to be. To be like me, like me, to do the things I've been doing. Okay, so go wait until we get the Holy Spirit and be imbued with power and the Spirit. He says, and you'll do the same things that I do. Okay, so it says here, he, he, and he found it fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm almost coming to an end. Um, okay, Acts 1. I just want to read for you Acts 1 verse 8. It says, um, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and all Samaria and to all the uttermost parts of the earth. Okay, so we started off, we said about Jesus' mission is my mission. Okay? Jesus' message is now my message. Now, how was, what was Jesus' method? Okay, how did he do? First of all, here comes Jesus and he's one, he's one Jesus. Single person, Jesus. But now he starts calling people and he wants to start reproducing this in, in them. Okay? So go with me to Luke 9. Luke 9. This is important that we start seeing what I'm going to say now. Luke 9, from verse 1. Verse 1 and 2. So we see clearly what Jesus did. He demonstrated over and over, and I mean, you can read it all over the place. How Jesus healed the sick, how he preached about the kingdom, how he did this. We read in the beginning what he said, this is my mission statement, the Spirit is upon me to do these things. Okay, we read all this. Now listen to this, Luke 9. He says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to keep pure diseases. Come on, over all. That's what we read. That is the purpose he came, to destroy the works of the devil. Now he comes and he gives them all authority and power to do the same thing. Okay? It says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. 
Okay, that was his first people he started sending out. Okay, he says, to preach the kingdom and to heal the sick. So what's he's been doing? And he's, uh, yeah, go with me to, so it was said 12 people. Wow. Now go with me to Luke 10. <coughs> so first there was 12. Now Luke 10, there's 1 and 2. It says, After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two, before his face into every city and place, where they found, where they himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Okay. So first he had twelve. And now suddenly he appoints another 70. another 70. Okay, in verse 17 he says, I just want to go down to verse 17. It says, And the 70 returned all with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Come on, suddenly they experienced, Oh my goodness, you really gave us the authority and power, and even the devils are subject unto us. Now. Okay? Okay, so what I want you to see is first, there was 12. Then there was 72 added. So what is that? If you add it up, it's 85. You see. So I mean Jesus had 85 people going around and doing what he was doing. First it was just him, then it's 12. Now it's Soma 85. Do you see how he, he's, he wants to let this thing reproduce? Okay, so then Matthew 28, and I'm going to end with this scripture, Matthew 28. Verse 18, see, don't be talking, I can't find it. Okay, exactly. <laughs> okay, Matthew 28. <laughs> Matthew 28. <clears throat> sure. And now listen to this. I love this. Jesus came and he spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. But, but now listen closely to what he says. Teach all nations. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then he says, teaching them to observe all things which ever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So listen, he doesn't just stop with them. He says, listen, now you go out. You go teach them to observe or to do everything I've told you to do. Mm -hmm. You see how God just wants this thing to go and to go and to go. And here we are today, thousands of years later. The gospel is spreading like wildfire throughout the earth. It is. You know, it's funny, they say in places, I've just heard a guy also in the week testifying like, how rough it is going in some places. And like, let's say in a place like China where, you know, in place, wherever there's places where they say, no, the gospel can't be preached, like they try and control it or they try and suppress it, that's the places where it actually gets fired up. He says it's exploding. And now, that, and then they come to a place where they realize, okay, but we can't kill all the Christians anymore because we are not all good, but we are all beginning to Christian now. You hear what I'm saying? Like it gets, it's just spreading. So, you know, even in the places where we think, Yo, man, the enemy looks like he's trying, he's winning, he's like, no, nah, 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 he's not winning. The more he's trying to suppress this thing, the more he just catches on. So now throughout the world, I mean, come on, people are being baptized in the Spirit, they're praying in tongues, they're going out, they're healing the sick, they're doing the works that Jesus did. And that's what Jesus could want us to do, go and do this thing. So I just want to end by saying this, it's an everyday thing. Um, I was listening to the one guy, he says, you know, he was just speaking about how he goes about and how God just uses, and he says, like for instance, the other day he said he was at the, somewhere in the airport or what, and something with his luggage got mixed up, so then he had to phone someone to sort this out, so he was speaking over the phone with this lady, and he's like, while he's speaking to her, he's like, okay, Holy Spirit, just being aware, listen, I've got the Spirit with me, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he's anointed me, go on, that thing. And he's like, okay, Lord, maybe is there something you want to tell this lady? And as he's speaking to her, he just had a feeling, you know, she's got pain in her shoulder, and, you know, 
a foot and in a hip or something. And he says, listen, I know this is funny, but tell me, do you have pain in your hip and your shoulder and your foot? And she's like, yo, yes, how did you know? It's like, no. It's like, tell me on the level, like, how big is it? She's like, no, it's like really painful. And he's like, okay, um, can I just pray for you? And he prayed and all the pain mm -hmm. left. You know, it's just like, you know, this, and I, I love that kind of testimonies, like people at the gas station, people at the, because it's an everyday thing. Okay, it should be an everyday. And what, and what I've realized is we are surrounded with opportunities to preach the good news, to be the light, to, to just love on people, to heal the brokenhearted. I mean, come on, think about people going through you or going through, around you that's, that's broken, that's, that's, they're going through stuff. And yeah, you sit and you've got the spirit and you've, you're the answer. And sick, you know, people with sickness. Um, I love testimonies like this. And I love it when, well, you're not supposed to just love other people's testimonies. You're supposed to ourselves go out and start seeing these things. And um, also, uh, you know, the guy would say, yeah, he was going like for a cab drive. And suddenly also there was like a Muslim person driving him around and he was saying listen and he just felt hey man do you have to, i don't know why i'm sensing this but and i think it was also like for pain he, he he said the person had pain and he said but it's the guy but this is the thing this is the key and i just want to leave you with this he's, he's like in that situation um he said listen would it be okay do you would you like the pain to go away it's like yeah i would like the pain to go away he says, well, I can make it go away. He's like, really? You know, he doesn't say, can I pray for you? I'm a Christian. He's like, I can make your pain go away. And the person's like, really? He's like, yeah. Um, and he said, um, he said, yeah, you see, I just speak to pain and it goes. <laughs> so can I try it on you? Well, yeah, sure you can. Speak to the pain and it goes. Then afterwards, he asked, yes, how did you do this? Now you see, it's actually Jesus, because I believe in Jesus. <laughs> Come on, I think that's the way we need to approach it. A lot of times, God will give us the wisdom or the Holy Spirit, but a lot of times, you know, when you go out and you're like, hey, can I pray for you? People are like, what? <laughs> or if you come with that thing, and I also have kind of get, I love that method of first get them healed and then tell them how it happened. <laughs> it's like then they can't do anything with it. I'm already healed, so I think, you know, what are you going to do with it? So, um, so yeah, I love that. But you know, every day there's opportunities. So I believe the key is just be aware. Just be aware. This is my mission. Mm -hmm. This is my calling. Jesus said, as you've seen me, Father, mm -hmm. I sent him. So I've got the same mission. I've got the same calling. I've got the same anointing. What empowered Jesus to do what he did, I now have. Okay, the Spirit empowers me to do the same works. And just step out. Just step out. Just step out. Amen? Amen. So I'm excited to see what God is going to do. And I'm excited for destinies and to hear <laughs> as you step up. You know, I love it where it says um, the kingdom does not come with observation. You won't say, oh, here it is, or oh, there it is. No, but the kingdom is within you. In other words, you won't first see it and then. No, you're first going to believe it and then you're going to see it. <laughs> so step up. And you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it manifest. Amen. Um, so yeah. On that note, is there anyone that's sick here or that's got pain? Anyone? So I'm all gesund. Hey, you're cool. Yeah. Okay. Sick.